you know, big picture, I really couldn't couldn't be happier with with the way things went overall. Perfect. Perfect. Oh yeah, get in there, get in there tight. Oh, beautiful. Good afternoon, golfers of Earth. All you fine second swing faithful. Well, it is um, Thursday. I got home from the US Senior Open on Monday late. I went to bed at 8.30 at night and I didn't get up till about 8.30 in the morning. So I got a good solid 12 hours of sleep. Apparently I needed it. I am headed to Ohio to play in the Tiger Town Open, which uh, if you look at the, the press stuff for that is Ohio's largest one day purse. It's 5,000 for first place, 1,500 for seniors. And I'm gonna double dip. I'm gonna play both the uh, regular and the senior. Uh, we all play the same tees. This is a tournament that I've played in many, 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 many times being from Ohio. And uh, I last won it in 2015, shooting 64 and winning in a playoff. Typically, it takes around 64 to get a to get a W in the regular division. Uh, I think 71 seniors last year. So um, I'm hoping I can put up a number that will uh, kind of get me into a little bit of the regular pot and all of the senior pot. So I've had some time to digest what everything that happened at the at the u.s senior open and you know big picture i really couldn't couldn't be happier with with the way things went overall um from a mental side i had a lot of nerves and a lot of anxiety heading into that event and some of them were outside stressors and to be honest the way things fell, you know, from the time I, basically the time I got out there, from the time I was on my way out there, uh, to the time I teed it up, things just went really, really smoothly and really very well. And, um, you know, by the time I teed off the first day, my stress level was, was pretty low. I actually feel like, for the most part, I had a pretty good brain week. Um, this was a golf course that had reasonably narrow fairways, certainly not excessive. I mean, there were there were places that had you had plenty of fairway to work with, um, and that was that was really good because if you got off those fairways, oh man, I tell you what. So you had a you had a first cut of rough that was about a yard wide and you had about a 90 percent chance of catching a a pretty good pretty playable lie out of that first cut on wednesday for the the first round they cut the second cut back about six yards so you had a little bit of room to work with before then and they cut it back um, but even with them cutting it back and cutting that stuff down a little bit, I would give it no better than 50-50. Uh, catching a lie that you could advance the way you'd want to be able to advance to hit a shot into the greens. Um, it, was, it was treacherous. And you could get a good lie and you could get a really bad lie. If you went outside of that second cut, my goodness, it was probably 
80-20 chop it back to the fairway. The lies were just so crazy. I was driving out to this golf course going, all right, you know, the fairways are going to be pretty tight, but this is the senior open. They're not going to have the rough like the U.S. open. They wouldn't do that. Oh, yeah. They would. And they did. I mean, it was just crazy, crazy deep. First tee shot I hit of the day, uh, first round, standing on number 10, nervous. Number 10's the hardest hole on the golf course. That could be the hardest hole on any golf course. My goodness, this thing is tough. 500 yard par four, downhill tee shot, creek at 290 running to about 300. I mean, it's, and then straight back uphill to a green that doesn't look like it exists. It's kind of an infinity green. You, you almost can't see where you're, you know, where you're going or what you're trying to hit to. And it was, yeah, fortunate I hit it really hard off the tee because I did hang it a bit to the right. And I'm thinking, oh man, I've just got off to the start, you know. First hole, I'm gonna drive it in the in the in the hazard, and I'm gonna take a drop, I'm gonna start with double. Well, I cleared the hazard, and <laughs> I cleared the hazard. That doesn't mean there weren't hazards ahead. So get down there and thank every single volunteer that worked at this golf tournament they got a huge workout because every shot that we hit as players potentially could be a lost ball and uh everybody found every ball in my group and so uh if i was wearing a cap i would tip my cap to all the volunteers out there they did just a magnificent job for us um so my ball had a little flag next to it. Thank goodness for that because I was standing over it and I almost couldn't see the golf ball. I almost couldn't see my feet. So instead of being able to really advance the ball anywhere toward the, the green, I had to pull out a gap wedge, swing as hard as I could to try to advance this ball maybe 75 80 yards something like that and that was the best it was going to get absolutely the best it was going to get um, and then the most phenomenal thing happened i hit a nice little gap wedge in to about 12 feet and i drained the butt and that set off a, a incredible incredible first day that saw me uh part of the time up on the first page of the leaderboard some of the time on the second page of the leaderboard and what, what a wonderful thing. I mean, I putted really, really well. I hit the ball well. I drove the ball well. Uh, yeah, certainly no, no complaints at all about the way things went on day one. And day two pretty much picked right up where day one left off. Um, you know, when I got into trouble, I played smart. I've, I've always said, you know, manage the damage. You don't want to make a, a fracture, a compound fracture. And so, you know, I, I like to, if I'm in trouble, I like to get out of trouble and try to move forward from there. And it was, uh, it was a great motto for this week, for sure. And I did that, you know, I, I made some bogeys, but I made some birdies and was able to hang in there. I birdied the ninth hole, got to one under for the tournament. And then some things went a little squiffy. Uh, I don't really know what went on on the back nine. I started to struggle a little bit. Um, when I do start to struggle, my mind starts to kick into high drive. And, and that's, when, that's when it really gets hard for me because most of the time now, unless things are, are really going bad, I'm pretty much able to tell my brain to just, you know, shuffle off, you know, shut up. I can handle it, the body can handle it from here. And unfortunately, once things started to get a little, you know, a little iffy there, the, the, old, the old standby of counting back the shots that you have to play with 
starts to creep in. And I remember this full well from, from tournament golf as a, as a full-time touring professional. We all know pretty much what the numbers are gonna be usually, within a shot or two anyway. And the cut line had been sitting, I believe at two under, or sorry, two over uh, first day. So you can pretty much double that, maybe double it and add one. So, you know, I'm struggling and I can't seem to get the putts to fall the way they were. I'm putting too much pressure on. And finally, you know, I'm, I'm five over with uh, four holes to play on the, on the back nine. And I had to get up and down out of the bunk, left bunker on 15. Managed to make a, about a 15 footer there. I then three putted 16 from nine feet. I had a really great shot right behind the hole. Literally just kind of just blew on my putt and it, it caught the edge and rolled like six feet behind and missed it coming back. So I make bogey there. And then I had to get up and down on 17 and 18, uh, including about a 10 footer on 18, which I thought was really gonna be the difference between potentially making the cut and not making the cut. And uh, it didn't quite end up that way. Cut line did go to seven over par. Uh, so I was in by two, shooting five over. Um, you know, shot 70 first round, 75 second round. You know, it's US Open, it's just not that bad, you know? So I was really just thrilled to make the cut there. Um, then there was the whole hotel, you know, kind of falling apart fiasco on Saturday night. Where'd you sleep? Uh, last night, car right over there. The whole hotel's shaking. The water had started coming in from the, from the ceiling. Kind of watched what the storm was doing, kind of trying to figure out what our timeline was gonna be. Um, then the alarm started going off again. Went downstairs and found that the whole lobby area was just flooding out. John, my, my good friend and caddy here, his, his poor car got just nailed by a piece of roof that came off. So all scraped up on the side, two big pieces of metal actually wrapped around and went into his back bumper. So I went downstairs to see what the deal was and found out they were gonna do a mandatory evacuation. So I ended up coming over here and just sleeping in the parking lot. I mean, look, it's, it's moving day in a, in a major. What am I gonna do, right? First professional major, I'm ready to go. Uh, between the hours of midnight and 2 a.m., the basically the roof of my hotel blew off. And so the whole hotel had to be re, uh, had to be evacuated. And they didn't have any place to put us. It was two o'clock in the morning and all the hotels were booked up. So I ended up, uh, we had to deal with some damage to my caddy's car and uh, from a piece of the roof that blew off. And then by the time we'd kind of finished that up, I just kind of laid in the car for a while and I couldn't get sleep. So I got up, went and got a couple of, uh, a couple of caffeinated beverages, which I knew I was going to need for the day and uh, drove up to the golf course. By the time we got there, due to all the damage on the golf course, uh, we had a three hour delay, which was an absolute blessing for me. It allowed me to get in back into the car and I slept in the car for about two solid hours. I actually fell asleep and, and got some rest. So running on, you know, two hours before the disaster, two hours after the disaster, uh, you know, get up and, and go play moving day at a, at a, a senior major. So, you know, I played well uh, the third day. Um, Made some birdies again. Uh, hit the ball overall pretty good. At the end, I could really kind of feel myself starting to lose the putter a little bit. Just tentativeness creeping in, uh, not being able to stroke the ball the way I really want to be able to stroke it. And it kind of sent off some, some warning flags for me, which really, those, those flags were very justified uh, as of uh, Sunday. Uh, 
I really just, I didn't have a whole lot Sunday, and I don't know whether it's because this was my first four round tournament that I've played in 13 years, or just general tiredness, or mental tiredness. I don't know exactly what it was. Um, but I did not have my best stuff. And, uh, you know, kind of had it. I kind of had the same disastrous front nine that I had on the back nine the, the second round. And then I was able to kind of pull things together. You know, I, my attitude now is so different from what it used to be. Um, I would have let the kind of scores that I was, I was shooting, the mistakes that I was making, really bogged me down in the past. And I've really gotten to the point now where I'm just gonna kind of let it go. You know, it is what it is. And you never know what else anybody else is doing. And all we can control is, is our own selves. So, you know, I wasn't playing well. I know it is freaking me out a little bit, stressing me out a little bit, but you know, I'm gonna keep swinging at it. And I got things under control a little better. You know, the backside's not that easy. And I played the last six holes, one under par. Uh, I was bound and determined not to shoot 80 at this golf course. It'd be very easy to shoot 80 at this golf course, even though it's par 70. You know, the holes are just hard. The rough is brutal. And so, I mean, I'm very pleased to have shot one under the last six to, to kind of, you know, hold things together. Um, I did lose 11, 11 places the last round. Could have been way worse. Um, could have been way better, of course. Uh, but I'm really trying not to dwell on the fact that, you know, I shot 79 the last round. I'm just trying to focus on the fact that, you know, 3,000 people tried to qualify for this golf tournament. Another 100 or so were already exempt for this golf tournament. So we're looking at roughly 3,100 people made an attempt at this golf course, at this golf tournament, and I finished 56th. I can't be disappointed with that. I have a job, you know, I work, uh, I work full time. So you wouldn't know it right now. Uh, I don't play and practice the way so many of these guys do. So, you know, given the limitations that, that I have, you know, I think I did great. I really do. I'm, I'm like, I'm super happy. My goals for the week were not to make an ass of myself. And I think I accounted for myself quite well. I then wanted to make the cut, and I made it by two. Also wanted to lose 10 pounds. That didn't happen. Uh, I lost four, so it was better than nothing. Uh, it really wasn't hot enough, I don't think, to, uh, to lose much weight. Either that or that's just me being silly, and uh, you could lose weight walking this golf course if you didn't eat too many wings and stuff like that afterwards. So, anyway, um, you know, I'm really happy with the performance. Um, my caddy, John Wilkins, was was fantastic. Absolute rock. Uh, spot on the whole week. Just great, you know. He, was, uh, he wasn't cheap, but he was worth every penny. And uh, to the second swing crew that came out, Simon, Russ... Larry, Phil, Dan, you guys are so awesome. My goodness, what what support to have. Uh, it just makes the whole week. It really does. You know, it's, it's so much more fun when you have awesome friends to share it with. And I cannot possibly thank you all enough for all the support and being encouraging and saying, you know, hey, you know, go play, do some, do the events. Um, you know, I'm really proud of the fact that I was able to get into this tournament, be able to promote second swing along the way. Uh, I want to do it again next year because that was a whole lot of fun. Uh, you know, it's just been great. It really has been great. Uh, and it means so much to me to have your support. It really does. Very, very touched. Um, so that's kind of our, our recap, you know. Um, Physically pretty solid. Mentally, pretty solid till the last day. I know some things started to creep in there in the last day, but um, you know, I'm gonna try and address that as I go forward. We're gonna try and see if we can find some 
some methods of, of kind of quieting all this down. Um, I've got six events left this year. Uh, I'm going to play Tiger Town Open this week. And I come home for a week, and then I'm off at New Hampshire, followed almost immediately by Rhode Island. And then I got a week, and then I got Pennsylvania State Open. And I got two weeks, and I got Maine. And I got another couple weeks, and I got Cape Cod. So I've got six events left. I've already had the best summer I've had since I started playing tournament golf again back in 2015. Absolutely amazing. So um, we're going to see how things go at Tiger Town. I made a little change to my putter, put a different grip on it. I feel like I need a little bit thicker grip. Um, I really like the Rosemark grip, but I did feel like it allows me to get a little too handsy. And I, I, when I was getting a little antsy, I was definitely getting handsy. So we're gonna we're gonna just go with, uh, with a little thicker grip here. Finally found a super stroke that I like. So we'll, I'll report back on that as well. I did put a counterbalance in it. Um, if for some reason I decide I don't like that, I can always pull it out, not a problem. So, anyhow, um, hey, we're almost to the weekend, so I'm gonna wish everybody a great weekend. Play some golf, have some fun, enjoy yourself. Uh, play the best game on, on earth. It is, uh, it's a nightmare, it's a dream. It's just absolutely fantastic, and uh, I wish every one of you out there just a, a wonderful experience in this game. Uh, it's given me so much, and continues to give me so much, despite some challenges. Um, I don't know. I don't know who I'd be or what I'd be without it. So uh, I wish you all the best. Be safe. Take care. We will talk soon.